In this section, we'll be looking at editing MIDI data, mainly within the PRV, but we'll also look at the event inspector and the event list views. As we've seen in previous videos, we can play a keyboard and record data, but there are other ways of getting MIDI into Sonar. It can also be drawn into the PRV view, or staff view using Sonar's draw tools, or entered via the event list view, where any MIDI data present in a track is also visible. Whichever input method is used, the data will be placed into a MIDI clip. I'll be editing mainly in the PRV, but we'll look at the staff view later. Here I have a MIDI track containing some MIDI data in a clip that I played in from a keyboard. I'm a guitarist, not a keyboard player, so there's usually plenty of editing and tidying up to be done. The PRV is the ideal place for that. I'll use a smart tool with various modifiers where necessary. Before we get to the PRV, I'm going to take a quick look at the Event Inspector, which is a great way of editing multiple MIDI events at once. It can be used in a PRV, and we'll look at it further there, but it can also be used in any other view where there is selected MIDI data, including the track view. It displays and allows for adjustment of the following parameters. Time. This is the start time of any selected event or multiple events, or in this case, a clip. It's in measure beats and tick format, but can be entered with just spaces or a single digit. For example, if I enter five, the start of the clip moves to measure five. In the PRV, it can be used to move notes, and we'll see that later. Multiple events are selected. This will be blank. It's still possible to enter a start time here, but of course those events will both move to that time. When a clip is selected, duration will show as a percentage, as there's usually multiple events in the clip. This percentage figure though can be used to change note length relative to each other. For example, entering 50% will half the note length of all notes, regardless of their actual length. Pitch is entered either via MIDI note name, such as C-sharp 4, or as a modifier to existing notes. Modifiers are entered as positive or negative numbers in semitone steps. If I enter plus 2, all notes in that clip have just gone up a tone. Notice that there's a difference between entering plus 2 and 2. If I enter 2, all notes have been set at D0, because 2 is the MIDI note number for the pitch D0. Velocity is similar and is displayed and entered either as a value between 0 and 127 or using a modifier similar to that in the pitch field. If multiple notes of different velocities are selected, the display reads plus 0. Channel number is a number between 1 and 16. And if selected notes are on different channels, this will be blank. Once again, any values entered here will apply to all selected notes. Now let's open the PRV and have a look at the Event Inspector there. Much of this is the same as in the track view, but there are differences in the PRV, especially when single notes or sometimes even multiple notes are selected. Duration, for instance. Duration is a length of note in PPQ format, or if multiple notes of different length are selected, it again displays as a percentage. We can either use the same method of changing the percentage when multiple notes are selected, or if it's a single note, we can enter our direct value here, and the note changes accordingly. You'll see when a single note is selected, the pitch is displayed, as is the velocity. Any of these settings can be changed from here. Much of what we saw in the track view is also true for the PRV. The now time advances from left to right along the time ruler. We can use many of the same tools for navigation and zooming that we saw in the track view. Markers can be added, existing ones will show, and the same applies for loop points. If the zoom level isn't right for you, use one of the zoom methods we saw earlier to zoom in or out. I covered the snap settings earlier, and they're probably even more useful here than they are in the track view. Both global snaps set in the track view are available, but we also have the option to set an independent PRV snap value if we wish, with separate snap points. The controls for this are found to the top right corner. Click on the arrow just to the left of the square grid to expose the controls, which are similar to the main snap settings in the snap module. Click and hold the duration field to expose the snap resolution choices here. I have mine set at a sixteenth. We can also choose to snap to MIDI landmarks, which is very handy for lining up notes that aren't exactly on the grid, so I'm turning that on. And snap to markers is also available as a snap option as well. Note, although the settings here are independent, the global snap needs to be on to use the PRV snap. It cannot be turned on and off independently. The tempo grid is more obvious in this view and can be displayed how we want it to look. We can choose to show the grid at a higher resolution, as I have here. To set that, check the Show Vertical Grid Lines in the View menu, and then select the required grid resolution. This can be a preset musical value, or set to follow the snap settings. This setting will follow the PRV snap settings if it's on, 
or default to quarters if it's off. Remember that there is a sensitivity setting for the snap value in preferences under the customization tab in the snap to grid page. Notice if it was zoomed out with a high grid resolution. We won't necessarily see the chosen grid resolution until we zoom in closer. In addition to the grid lines, it's also possible to show aim assist both vertical and horizontally. This can help with positioning notes more accurately. Press X to show or hide it. That's off. That's on. Another form of zoom that's available in the PRV and inline PRV is microscope mode. This is turned on in the view menu. And the settings for it are found in preferences, customization, editing. Here it can be turned on and off, as well as the threshold settings changed. The note height figure is a pixel height, as is a diagonal setting, which refers to the diameter of the microscope when displayed. The magnifying time setting can be used to disable horizontal magnification when zoom settings cause the notes to be very narrow. There are further options that can be set, such as horizontal threshold, but they're set as variables in the WinCake section of the Cakewalk Any file. Once you're happy with your settings, click on OK. When the vertical size falls below the threshold, the microscope mode will automatically come on. This can be handy for intricate work, giving you greater control while still zoomed out. The next setting we'll look at is the draw resolution. This decides the default musical duration of any new notes that we draw using left double click and is set either in a tools module or in the HUD. I have mine set to 30 second notes, but this can also be set to last touch, which will vary depending on the last note touched. The main area of the PRV is known as the notes pane, and here notes can be drawn, moved, stretched, shrunk, muted, and have their velocity changed. In fact, Changed in just about any way using this pane and a smart tool. We'll look at this in more detail shortly. To the left of the notes pane is the note names pane, which is currently displaying piano keys. But this will show drum names when a drum synth is a selected output for the currently active track. When a drum map is the active track, the drum pane not only displays note names, but also has the in and out note mapping numbers, as well as solo and mute buttons available. We'll see that shortly. No matter what is displayed here though, clicking on a note or name, We'll play the note on the synth is assigned to. Right clicking on the pane opens up the note names options where we can change the settings to an instrument file if we wish. Switching to a MIDI track where a drum map is assigned and a drum map is loaded. Right clicking on this brings up a menu where we can mute, solo and open the individual note mapping dialog where changes can be made if needed. Drum map manager can also be opened from here and checking the display pitch names option We'll change the note numbers to diatonic names. Regardless of whether a drum map track is loaded or an instrument track, we can choose to show or hide the controller pane at the bottom from the view menu. When it's not visible, the controller data shows in the notes pane and there is an edit filter just above the note name panel to control which data is displayed or available to edit. We'll look at the controller pane and drawing controllers shortly. The track list pane to the right can be hidden if required and this is where we see the tracks which are displayed in the notes pane and control how they are displayed, heard and edited. We can add tracks using the PRV Tracks menu. Select the tracks you want from the Pick Tracks dialog. Clicking on a track name here changes the in focus track. To hide the drum map, deselect it from the view menu. Showing the controller pane will move the velocity and controller tails from the notes pane to their own lanes. The first coloured square icon shows the colour that the track data is displayed in and toggles whether the track data is visible or not. Next to that is an editing toggle. When this is grey, the data cannot be edited and the notes are also displayed as grey in a note pane to reflect that. That's handy for stopping accidental edits on a track while still being able to see the notes as a context view. A useful key press to use here is V, which will invert any selection that you have made for display or editing. Beneath those are the MSR buttons that work the same way as in other views, useful for allowing us to mute or solo a track without changing views. To the right are the track names for reference. Note when there's a slight highlight to the track, it shows that it's currently in focus and any new data we draw will be put into this track. Selecting a note from a different track will change the track focus and that track will then become the in focus track. Right clicking on a track brings up a context menu that shows the same settings as those available in the inspector and allows us to turn snap to scale on or off and change the various settings. This includes setting the root note, 
the scale type, and opening the scale manager where scales can be created and edited. Also, the snap settings for the scale, which allows you to set what happens to notes entered that aren't in the selected scale. Once a snap to scale is active, it's impossible to enter or move a note that is outside of the scale, although the setting can be temporarily overridden by holding down both mouse buttons as you edit or move a note. These scale settings are all per track. If you do want to work with more than one PRV so that a track is in its own view, that's possible by right-clicking on the current PRV tab and selecting Lock Contents. Then when we return to the track view and open another MIDI track, we get a second version of the PRV in a new tab. You can repeat this for as many views as you want. Remember, if we want to change any track settings, we can always use the Track Inspector. Let's float that and have a look. The controls in the left strip are duplicates of those that we've seen in the track view header. Those in the right-hand strip are in addition to those controls. Let's look at those. Towards the top of the strip are the chorus and reverb level settings, where we can set the relevant level for those MIDI effects. Snap to scale we've just seen in the PRV view. We looked at both input quantize and the arpeggiator in the recording section. Now let's move on to editing in the PRV.